So we are overjoyed to see you here this Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, Sunday, December 5th from 5 o'clock to 6.30, we're going to have a walkthrough, um, uh, the, the, the Town of Bethlehem walkthrough. And um, it's maybe coming up behind me or in front of me. Um, but uh, from 5 to 6.30 on December 5th, we would love to see you here. Um, we will have singing. We'll have stations. Um, and we would like for you to, to celebrate with us. Um, second thing, thank you to those who came out and um, worshiped through song with us last night. It was an outstanding time, and we want to thank the people that came here and that performed. Um, your service in the Lord is greatly appreciated by us and by everyone who came out and saw you last night. So we just really want to thank you very much for that. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, this morning... I want to read from the first letter to the church in Thessalonica from the fifth chapter. Paul has written to the church about uh, various different things, but mainly the bulk of his letter involves a discussion about sanctification and love for one another, and then giving us hope that the Jesus who died for us here will come back for us and take us to our heavenly home. Then in the end, starting in the 12th verse, he says, But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. And then he gives us a quote that answers a question that people ask every single day. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'll say that again. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and always be giving thanks. Not one day a year. Not this coming Thursday. Pray without ceasing and always be giving thanks. So when we're with our brothers and sisters, are we thankful for each one of them? When we are out in our daily lives, do we look like people who every day of the year, not just, oh look, Thursday is coming, we get to eat turkey and gather with people, but every single day being thankful for the fact that God sent His Son to die for us, and then, as He ascended, sent His Holy Spirit that in Him and through His ministry here on earth, we might be able to have unity. This is the source of rejoicing. This is where we can pray without ceasing because God now hears our prayers. This is how we can give thanks in all things. So I just want to offer that to you today that there is always a reason to rejoice for God has forgiven the unforgivable in us. So we must forgive the unforgivable in one another. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we come before you this morning giving thanks. Giving thanks not just now, but always. Rejoicing in the fact that you came, that you died for our sin. A perfect, sinless death for a sinful population. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we ask that you continually fill us with your Holy Spirit. That we might be ministers of truth, of love, and of generosity to a world who is in such darkness. And Father, we pray these things in the holy and precious name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You'll notice in the songs that we're singing, it's a Thanksgiving theme. So we ask you to stand and sing with us this morning on these beautiful courses. to the 
Oh, yeah. 
top. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. next song it is a good thing I want you to listen as Jeff reads that scripture and makes reference to where this song came from uh, this next song has a powerful meaning to it as all of them have but to to just listen to the lyrics and the words of this song and just meditate on them and think about where this song came from Jeff okay I'm gonna start in uh, Psalm 91 and end in 92 says because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has shown he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On a string instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hand. Oh, Lord, how great are your works. I think it's very appropriate, uh, as Jack mentioned, all the songs are about Thanksgiving, and it's, uh, it's that time of year for us. That time of year where, based on a historical fact, we celebrate Thanksgiving. But as a Christian, we should celebrate Thanksgiving every day. We should have a thankful heart. And so as we sing this song, Let's make it a, a song of praise unto the Lord. Amen. Mm. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise. Show for loving God. 
this your prayer. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise. the musicians just play. one more time and if you know the lyrics by heart just close your eyes and lift your hearts to the Lord it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise hallelujah it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise If you're gathering, if you're gathering with your family uh, this coming Thanksgiving, be sure to thank the Lord for your family. And if they are not able to be here, be sure to thank the Lord for your family. These last two songs are our favorite hymns at Thanksgiving. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings and come ye thankful people come. Sing it out, congregation. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chasten and hasten his will to make known the wicked oppressing. Now sing, he's from distressing, sing praise. 
is to his name, he forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we are winning, now Lord, for that our sight, for the glory be thine. We all do extol thee, the leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender will be. Let thy congregation escape in tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Come, ye thankful people, come, praise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God, our Maker, doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, praise the song of Sardis home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield. Wheat and tares together sown, unto joy our sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come, shall take his harvest home from his fields and in that day all offenses purge away give his angels charge at last in the fire the tears to cast but the fruitful years to store in his garner Before you are seated this morning, before you are seated, would you just walk across the aisle or whatever and just speak to someone and welcome them this morning? Amen. Amen. Psalms 100, verse 4. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Would you read this with me? Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. When Steve was commenting this morning, I, I was thinking he's going to steal my thunder today. But thank you for those words, Brother Steve. We always enjoy what you give to us on Sunday morning at the beginning of the service. Now I want you to look at verse 18. It doesn't say in some things, a few things, or things that we like or dislike. But it says in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, this morning I'm going to do something a little bit different in my message. And I, I think with the Thanksgiving theme that we've had this morning, and with Thanksgiving coming up, uh, this will kind of jog you to think about what you are thankful for. Not just, as Brother Jeff alluded to in his scripture, just one day out of the year, but every day. Christians ought to be the most thankful people in our culture. We have so much to be thankful for. And Sister Pam, if you would just... Uh, put that on the screen for me. I'm going to fill in the blanks in this message this morning. Take the word thanks, and I want to talk about some things that we should be thankful for. In everything, that means, one translation said, in all circumstances, be thankful unto the Lord. And you may say, well, the, some of the things that I've gone through uh, this year how in the world can I be thankful? Be thankful that you made it through. Amen? Be thankful that you made it through. Now let's look at the word T in the word thanks. And as I was pondering that all week long, and God just dropped it in my spirit, these words, this morning, but I had been reading it, rereading it, thinking about it, praying about it. Lord, what can I give? What can I give this congregation this morning that will cause them to look back over the last year and to be thankful? This past year has been a tough year, even going back into the last part of last year with so many people dying from COVID. So many people that, that uh, are, are sick with COVID right now. Matter of fact, I got a message via messenger last night from someone uh, asking me to pray for their young son who has COVID. And always someone is, is, is talking to me, and I know that you've had the same thing, uh, people asking you to pray for God's divine protection upon you until this pandemic ends or if it ends. The letter T, and these are very simplistic things. It's not deep, deep theology, but it's so practical that, that it, it jogs our mind to think about what are we thankful for? In everything, in all circumstances. I, I, uh, this morning I was reading about a husband and wife uh, who had been dieting. No meat on the table and, and everything that they had on the table was, had been steamed in a steamer. Greens and other things had been steamed in a steamer. And when they sat, sat down to eat, he told his wife, he said, now, I want you to say the blessing because I don't want to tell a lie. <laughs> uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you, you eat and you can burp and wouldn't remind you of nothing. Uh, those type of things. First of all, this morning, I am thankful for time, for time. That's simple, isn't it? That's simple. 
We look at it in a very simplistic way until time becomes no more. In the scripture in Ecclesiastes, he says, to everything there is a season and a and a what? And a time and a purpose under heaven. I thank God for time. I thank God for the times. This past year he's given me to share my faith with others. And also, I thank God for time that he has given my family. You think about it. When Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, he was so, Brother Eric, he was so frustrated with himself. Now, Solomon was one of the wisest men in the Bible. He was one of the richest men in the Bible. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Kings that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart from God. It took 13 years to build Solomon's house. I was reading probably six months ago, uh, they were doing an archaeological dig in the vicinity where Solomon lived, and on the hint, they found golden hinges that were on the stalls of his livestock. Solomon said, to everything there is a season and a time. And then he concludes in the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes. And he talks about, uh, and I'm not quoting this verbatim, but he said it's to fear God and to love Him and to keep His commandments. But you know what? Solomon's wealth couldn't buy him one extra second of time. I thank God this morning for time and for times he's allowed me as a preacher of the gospel to stand in this pulpit and preach what thus saith the Lord. Number two. Let's look at the H in thanks. I thank God. For heaven. Where the Bible says, eyes have not seen. No ears heard. Nor entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. I thank God that he's prepared a place that all the redeemed of God can go. So far this year, I have preached 23 funerals. And I wished I could say that every one of them that I preached, that I knew that the individual was saved and was in heaven. But I thank God for heaven. Paul says, for we know of this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven." And young people, listen to me. The older you get, the more your mindset changes. And you begin to think about heavenly things. Now, I'm not saying to be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. But I'm here to tell you this morning, and I hadn't planned to use heaven in that letter H. I had planned to use the word helpers. But God spoke into my spirit, Brother Steve, and he said, I want you to talk about heaven. 
a place that I have prepared that he wants all his children, everybody to go to. And not, I, I'm, I'm sad to say not everybody goes to heaven. Not everybody goes to heaven. And that's a tough thing to say, and that's a tough thing for people to fathom. That people die every day and spend eternity in a devil's hell when they could have accepted Christ into their heart and on their way to heaven or in heaven. I thank God for time. And I thank God for heaven. We are nearer home than we were yesterday. You're nearer home than you were yesterday. I'm nearer home than I was yesterday. I thank God for heaven. A, and this is a tough one for us, but it happens in our lives. And you say, how can you be thankful for it? Well, the scripture says, in everything give thanks. I thank God for adversity. Mm. I didn't expect any amens on that one. Solomon said in Proverbs 24, verse 10, he said, if thou fainteth in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Now that's verbatim, that passage of Scripture. If thou fainted in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. In Psalms 119, Verse 69, it says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. You, that's verse 67, I'm sorry. Verse 71 says, It was good that I had been afflicted, for then I learned the statutes and the commandments of God. Do you know what the statues and the commandments of God is? This. If you want to be driven to your knees, start encountering adversity. When adversity comes, he, Paul, Paul didn't leave any latitude for any weaseling out of this. He said, in everything give thanks. How can we give thanks when the bad times come? Do you know why? We live in a fallen world. And because of that, we will have adversities in life. They will come. And if you think that you can exist in, on planet Earth and not encounter adversity, you've got your head buried in the sand. And then there are those that will tell you, if you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, that you won't have any trouble in the world. That is a lie right out of the pits of hell. We all encounter adversity. We all go through storms. But how can we be thankful for adversity? We're thankful for adversity because what it does, it grows muscles in our spiritual man. It gives us intestinal fortitude. 
when you're sitting around your Thanksgiving table, whenever you're going to celebrate dinner with your family, whether it's today or a Wednesday night or Thursday, I want you to think about these things that I am mentioning to you this morning. The psalmist David said, I will enter into his courts with what? Thanksgiving in my what? In my heart. And to his courts with praise. How many of you can honestly say that you know how much time that you have left? Can any of us say that? How many of you can say, I know when I'm crossing over to the other side to heaven? We can't say that. But you can say, I know that I've had adversity. And if you haven't had it, it's coming. It's coming. Let's look at the end in the word thanks. And this is probably one of the most simplistic ones of all. I thank God for now. N-O-W. Now. You know all that we have is now we're not guaranteed another moment of time that's why we when we live in the now and you read in scripture if you took a strong concordance and began to look at that word now and all the scripture references that refer to the word now Now, the Bible says, is the accepted time. All we have is now. You say, well, preacher, you know, I'm planning for tomorrow. I'm planning for this evening. I'm planning for the next hour. Well, really, all you got is now. All that you and I have is now. And everything. Give thanks. When's the last time that you pause and thank God for the now that you're living in? Not tomorrow, not next week or next month or next year, but right now. Have you ever had uh, your parents to beckon you uh, or, or threaten you? And I'm not using that word threaten in a mean way. You come to this house, right? That didn't mean the next hour, nor the next day, but they went now. All that we have is now. If God took away my now, I wouldn't be able to conclude this message. But I thank God for now. Now is the accepted time. The letter K. I thank God Get a hold of this. For a knowing. And when I I mean that, I know that I'm saved. I know that God can keep me saved. So that gives me a knowing. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, the latter part of verse 12, I know 
whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul did, was not apprehensive in that statement. He said, I know whom I have believed. I preached a tent revival back in September at a Presbyterian church in Nathalie. And one of the members came up during the altar time. And he kind of alluded to that letter K. And this was what he said, Brother Steve. He said, I think I'm saved. I hope I'm saved. If you think that you're saved and you hope that you're saved, you mourn out not to be saved. God gives us a knowing. In 1 John 5, 13, he said, These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. God gives us a knowing. I don't have to wait till... uh, till I step over on this other side to know that I'm going to heaven. And that is not a boastful statement. That is just a statement of fact. God gives us a knowing. A knowing that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul says in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing. He that begun a good work in you is able to perform it and to keep you. There's a knowing. And you may have come up in a denominational tradition that teaches that you can't know, but brothers, I'm here to tell you, you can know. You can know. Thank God for knowing. There are so many things that we know in the natural. But what about the things we know in the spiritual? And if you'll notice the list, and I'm coming to the end of this list. And what I'm fixing to say the S is, is not at the bottom of the list, but is at the top of the list. But it so strategically fits into this acrostic here. I thank God. For my Savior. I thank God that I have a Savior that loves me when I'm wrong and loves me when I'm right. There's, since you've been saved, there is nothing in this world that you can do to make God love you any less. I know, I know that's a hard pill for some people to swallow. But see, we, we, can't, we can't base God's love like our love. Paul says, though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and have not love, it profit me nothing. Love suffers long in its kind. Love phoneth not itself, does not behave itself unseemly. And then he closes out that chapter. Now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. 
that God loved me and God loved you, that as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that in heaven he was rich. It came to this earth and became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. I thank God for my Savior this morning. Do you love him? Do you thank God for your Savior? Give him a hand clap of praise. I thank God. I thank God that we serve a Savior that sits high and looks low. I want you to take this few words of this message, and I've noticed some of you writing, writing these things down. But just think about this morning. If you were called upon to testify of what you're thankful for, what would be the first thing that would come out of your mouth? I thank God for a Savior. When the choir has sung its last anthem and the preacher has made his last prayer, when the people have heard their last sermon and the sound has died in the air, when the Bibles lie closed on the altar, and the pews are all empty of men. And each standing facing his record, the great book is open. What then? When the actor have played their last drama, and the mimic has made his last fun, when the films has flashed his last picture, and the billboard displays its last run. When the crowd seeking pleasure has gone, vanish out in the darkness again. When the trumpet of the ages is sounded, and we stand before him, what then? When the bugle call sinks into silence, and the large marching columns stand still, when the captains repeat its last order and they've captured the last fort on the hill. And the flags has been hauled from its masthead and the wounded afield are checked in. And all the world that rejected its Savior is asked for a reason. What then? Thank God for time, for heaven, for adversity, for now, and for knowing, and for our Savior. Would you stand and bow your heads, please? I thank God that I pastor a church 
that still loves to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ preached. I thank God for the pastors, ministerial students that we have in this congregation that helps me in the ministry here at the church. I thank God this morning for the choir, for the praise team, for the Sunday school teachers, for our deacons. I thank God for those that each week that are so faithful to do our audio, make sure things are right on the screen, the sound. I thank God that he's allowed me to pastor this church for these many years. That is my prayer, and that is my thanksgiving offering to the Lord this morning. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Lord with exceeding power and great glory. We bless in the name of Jesus each and every one that has been listening via Facebook. Lord, we just received a, yesterday in the mail a beautiful card of thanksgiving for this ministry of Facebook and a donation to our church. I thank God, Lord, that you brought us here for such a time as this. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.